<clears throat> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, Saturday, uh, just finished a busy day in the office. A uh, couple of shows, uh, Q&A for one of my groups. Um, a prep conference for uh, international uh, mail scope uh, thing we got going on where we're, one of my responsibilities is going to be providing mental health and personal performance services um, on a global level. So not just uh, here in the US. Um, and so a lot of things are going on. And I'm sitting up and, you know, had a conversation this morning with filmmaker Tony Lindsay, whose film, uh, Where the Heart Lies, I think is a very powerful force because it gives a narrative about black relationships and black men in particular that I don't think is prevalent enough in media, in entertainment, and in the presentation and the representation of who we are as men. So that was unbelievably powerful. Uh, if you want uh, to, to watch it, it's already on the channel. Uh, we did it this morning. Um, definitely uh, more of that type of stuff to come. But I want to take just a brief moment to talk to you again about the importance and we discussed this while we were talking about this film that was great and we got into it and it, like i said it's i think it's wonderful i think it was very well done for an independent film uh in which he also executive produced it uh but we got into the conversation of the importance of uh being actively involved in change and i've talked about this for as long as i can remember um my goal has always been as a psychologist, as a sociologist, as um, a contributor to what I believe is the long-term solution to uh, the issues and the ills of the black community. Uh, my, my, my goal has always not been to simply find out things to regurgitate for the sense of saying I know something uh, there's no value in simply knowing anything uh, a lot of people believe so but a lot of people have put a great deal of gravity in knowing something that somebody else doesn't know I'm not one of those people I put value in knowing something for the cert for the sake of using it to help others, knowing something for the sake of teaching it to others, knowing something for the sake of making it an instrument of problem solving for a particular person, family, group, race, whatever uh, the situation is, to be used for the purpose of problem solving. It was Dr. Amos Wilson who sat up and, and said, who said that you know, you haven't educated a person if you haven't taught them how to solve their problems. And I, I believe that. So my goal has always been problem solving. But in problem solving, what we have to understand is one of the most important elements of problem solving is personal engagement. The ability to actually be actively involved in solving the problem. Solving the problem isn't something that's accomplished from complaining. It's not something that's accomplished from whining. It's not something that's accomplished through begging. It, uh, it, it, it is something that is accomplished by gaining a lucid perspicacity or understanding of the issue at hand, understanding how it's working, how it's working against you, how it's impacting you, and then determining strategically and critically the best approach to create a more favorable situation for yourself and those you care about. So in essence, we got to talking about how do we do that? Well, obviously we need to unite. And so I'm excited about what uh, will come out of that because like I said, I hold both of those gentlemen that were on there, Dr. Blanchard and Tony Lindsay in high regard. And I believe they feel the same way about me and one another. And so I think something good comes out of that. But I'm looking at what's on the table. What are we doing as a collective? And the truth of the matter is, we do a lot of posturing. We do a lot of finger pointing. We do a lot of non-productive 
critiquing and see there's this thing called constructive criticism and then there's this thing called non-constructive or um, non-productive criticism and what that is is simply just talking about what's wrong without understanding how to make it right or to contribute to making it better and so the idea of constructive criticism is to say okay this is what's going on what are we going to do about it how can you change it what will work better and you've got some unbelievable minds that have contributed a large amount of content and uh, solutions that aren't acted upon. Um, prime example, right here at home, I've been talking to you guys for years about the importance of healing within the black community, Just talking about trauma. There are programs that can be supported that aren't. I've talked to you for years about black men lead. We want to complain about the violence in the community. We want to complain about uh, absentee fatherhood. We want to play, complain about the high level of criminality and mass incarceration. Uh, we want to talk about miseducation. We want to talk about a bunch of those things that are an uh, issue with young black males. But, but you got programs that have scientific backing and proof that shows they work. Won't get behind them. We talked about that today on uh, uh, the teachers. And Tony Lindsay has gotten to the point where he doesn't even want to ask the black community to back his films in the sense of providing capital to create businesses. Uh, it has a bad taste to him. Uh, you know, and we talked about that after the show. And it has a bad taste to him. He would rather just find one or two major investors and do it that way. Uh, the sad thing is the money's out there. The funding is out there. He said, well, what's, what's important about a movie? Well, the media is the most powerful influencer there is in the way that we move, the way that we think about ourselves. We don't, we don't uh, understand the gravity of imagery and how it is used to control narratives, how it is used to control self-image, how it is used to create uh, the idea of superiority and inferiority, uh, why we tend to gravitate towards certain things, why we tend to have a proclivity to do certain things is majorly dependent upon what we are seeing and what's presented in the media for those who are exposed to it. And so when you have an ability to create an entity that is controlled by us, then we have a controlling of the narrative of how we present it, how we are perceived, more importantly, how we perceive ourselves. But you have to be willing to understand that nobody's going to give us the platform. Nobody's going to, nobody who b doesn't benefit from it is going to back the platform. Now you get a bunch of people who are black, who get, have uh, major media platforms, but are they serving the black community? Are, are they reinforcing uh, the current status quo and so in essence that's something that we should be backing black men lead right a passage initiative L lower the violence lower domestic abuse right now the second leading cause of death for black women between the ages of 15 and 44 intimate partner homicide out of that, the vast majority of those uh, partners are black men. That's a part of African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. Something that can be mitigated through proper socialization. We love to, de 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 uh, to demean the black male based off of the behavior of some when the black the vast majority aren't but we don't want to look at what can be done differently and i say this here if we fail if we fail again with this generation to properly socialize young boys that we have the capacity to socialize those are the boys that are going to be getting with our daughters. 
those these are the young men who are going to be we're going to be trusting with our daughters and the statistics show us that the rate of domestic violence, the rate of intimate partner violence, the rate of intimate partner homicide is far too high among blacks. And it's something that we can actually mitigate. You know, we don't have to be, throw up our hands for everything that happens. There are things that we can actually do to impact it. It takes energy, it takes effort, it takes commitment, and it takes resources. But we've been trained to complain more than we've been trained to take action. We've literally been programmed to beg and whine and point fingers and go, oh my God, and throw our hands up. We've been basically programmed to believe we're helpless. And so when you believe you're helpless, you don't take action. You just complain. Complaining will not change our situation. Complaining will not change where we're at, what, 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 where we're going to be. If we're going to change the trajectory of the black race in this country and uh, throughout the world, it's going to come from action. It's going to come from commitment. It's going to come from being able to unite. That's something else we talked about significantly was unity. Unifying as black men, unifying as a race, and ultimately healing together as black men and black women. Something I'm working on, a project with, with someone else, um, you know, that's uh, doing something with our black women, a, a, a very exciting and dynamic black sister. Um on the west coast who is doing something and she's setting up this thing she asked me to come on board with called healing with him and it's about healing in an environment where both people are healing together so that you heal with an understanding of what the other person needs and what you can provide and vice versa so that uh there isn't this conflict we've got to close that gap uh, we got to ask ourselves why we love to hate one another. Black men against black women, black women against black men, black men in competition with black men, black women in competition, and very catty with other black women. Uh, I notice that far too often. And we got to ask ourselves why? How is it serving us? You know, we love to lord over each other. We like to make each other feel small. There's a bunch of things that don't serve us well as a collective and they use us against us. That has to stop. That has to stop. You know, we love to sit up and show up and try to find ways to break each other down, tear each other down, shoot each other down, talk about why someone's, it's the, it, it, like, like I told a young brother uh, yesterday or the day before, came on trying to tell me how stupid what I was talking about was, you know, how am I gonna show uh, what, how can I possibly have a plan of helping uh, young black boys escape racism when I haven't even escaped it? White supremacy, and I haven't even escaped it. And number one, did I ever say escape racism? I said be able to excel, to be able to navigate, to be able to have power. But, you know, but, but what I told him was, out of everything I did and responded to him, and believe me, if you come at me sideways, if you take the way I speak, you take the gray hair and misjudge me and get checked, it's on you. I was in the street long before I was in the schoolhouse. So trust me, there's another side to me. If you come at me sideways, you'll get it. And I'm not going to have any ill feels by giving it to you. I'm going to give you every bit of it if you ask for it. But what I did tell him at the end is if you were truly serious about being a part of the solution, first and foremost, I know you're not a part of the solution but because anybody that's actually out there doing their work has no time to be on somebody else's platform criticizing them. Second of all, if you were really authentically and genuinely thinking about uh, creating a positive environment and being an answer or a part of the solution, you would have contacted me man to man in private, face to face, and told me how you felt about what I was doing. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. The fact that you decided to do it on a public thing says it was more about you being heard and being seen than about actually coming up with a solution. But see, that's a problem among us, is that we don't want solutions. We Everybody's so power starved, everybody's so attention starved, that we're competing with one another. We feel like the only way that I can get a little space is I gotta attack somebody. 
like I said in, 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 the, in the interview today, the talk with Tony Lindsay, there's a bunch of people that I've had encounters with that everybody knows that I can say things about, but that doesn't serve the interest. Of, it might serve my ego, but it doesn't serve the interest of the best. I just sit up, I let a person know how I feel in private and I keep it moving. I don't have to agree with you on everything. We don't have to even like each other, but I will support you if I think you're doing good work. I will share your stuff. I will, I will link to your stuff and I can sit up and say, man, we didn't click. And you're not gonna click with everybody. That's the whole thing. We gotta get out of that too. You know, we spend more time trying to go after each other. I mean, I, I've seen so many beefs over the last six or seven, eight years of people who I felt were doing good work and literally derailed their momentum beefing with somebody. I'm not beefing with nobody. If you're not coming after my family or you're not messing with my finances, how I feel about you is a personal thing. I'm on something way bigger than that right now. Now, if you come at me sideways directly, I'm gonna check you. Cause something my grandmother told me a long time ago, and I use this with dealing with my kids and I also use this to deal with anybody that I come in contact with. My grandmother, I always told me, you know, that, that, that stuff they used to hear uh, parents when you get out, when we get home, you're gonna, I'm gonna whoop you. When you get home, I didn't get that. I knew exactly what my grandma, because my grandma told me, wherever you show out is where you get woe out. And that's how I handle people. You show out, you try to clown me in public, I'm going to get back at you in public. Now, if you want to talk, and we, you can come at me any kind of way, and, and I'm going to come at you, and ain't nobody there to see it but me and you. This just two men, mano on mano, doing what we got to do to get what we need to get. But if you come at me in per, uh, I'm going to come back at you. Now, I'm not going to keep doing it because I ain't finna play the little feminine back and forth bull crap with you either. I'm going to check your little moist ass and then if you can't get it, I'm going to delete your ass and keep moving because I'm about something. But I'm not going to let you just come on my platform and come at me sideways. You can disagree with me all day long. You can tell me, I think that's I think that's crazy. I think you are way all right. You know that I ain't buying it. You can do all that. But you're not going to come at me sideways and talk to me crazy. I put too much work into what I do. I put too much love into, uh, and too much heart into loving my people for you to do that. And I'm not gonna accept it. But at the end of the day, we're not putting the work in. It's that simple. With that being said, look, I'm gonna get ready to get off of here. Uh, before I forget, look, if you wanna really show some love, if you believe in what Dr. Rick is doing, you know, weird even using my name in a third person like that but i'm uh if you believe in what this person on this channel is doing show some love show some love uh support the work we're doing right now we're doing a targeted fundraiser for black men lead not getting much uh traction in it at all but uh like tony Lindsay said the one thing that he loves about me is that despite whatever happens, despite not getting the support that we need, despite not getting, you know, the things that we need, he says, you just keep going. And that's me. I'm going to keep going. I got one life to live. I've, and, and, and it's a very short life if you really think about it. If you watch how fast time flies, this life is short. My life has to have purpose. I've decided how I'm going to give that life purpose, how I'm going to make that life valuable and give value to that life. And it's about serving. And it's about making sure that I serve my people first. And I'm doing that. And so nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody's going to sit up and, and whether you support me or not, you can't stop me because I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Now, you can make it easy and you can be a part of the solution, but I'm built for this. Now, again, I ask you to support the work we're doing. I ask you to do it because it's worthy of it. It's worthy of your support. Look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, I got a couple of stops to make, but hey, show some love. I'm out.